this epic looking Y62 we've got in the background over my shoulder here uh, was inspired by a car that was here not long ago, uh, Chad's car, or the black one, uh, which was inspired by another car that was here a few weeks before that, which was Jason's car, we did a video on that one. And each of these people that bring the cars to us with a, a plan of what they want to do, really specific, we try and fulfill what they want. And uh, this is no different. There's a few unique things done to this car, just the way the customer wanted it. But the highlight of this story is this is the first pre-reg uh, 4499 GVM upgrade that we've done here at 4x4 DNA um, uh, to go out the door. It leaves tomorrow. So I'm going to walk you through the build and talk to you about the engineering process too. Sitting in the back because, as every YouTuber knows, the lighting when there's direct sun is awful. So um, we're under the shade in here. So I'll talk about the engineering side first because I think that's what a lot of people are interested in. Because in 2023, this is all quite new to be able to do pre-registered GVM upgraded cars. So what does this mean? So um, the process uh, for a post-reg is um, we get the car in. We put the suspension on it, so um, DMW, who are the underwriter of this system, um, they'll tell us what ingredients need to go onto the car. We fit it to the car, and then um, the engineer, local engineer, comes out and checks, make sure that we wrote it to the recipe, or made it to the recipe, um, and all the heights and everything are right. Then it goes to the local road authorities, so in Adelaide, it's Regency. They go over to make sure the engineering is up to scratch. The uh, ingredients are right, we've fitted them correctly, and all the engineers signed inspected. And then they put, uh, upgrade the, the GVM of the car. Um, so it's a bit of a process and it has to be inspected. Uh, Pre-Rego, it's a little bit different. So uh, through DMW's second stage manufacturing, um, the, the Nissan dealer, and you've got to talk them into this by the way, um, will release the car um, to us, 4x4 DNA, and um, we build the car, send DMW all the information, and then they end up signing off on it as an engineer, um, and then it just gets registered. So there isn't actually an inspection, um, which can make some things easier, but there's still all the uh, engineering things that have to be um, I's dotted, T's crossed, and all that sort of thing. So um, on one hand, it's much easier to do it through a pre-reg SSM, um, and there's less restrictions on tire size and lift and all that sort of thing. Um, however, it's still got to look like a bide bowl of the road rules too. So, um, this is the first pre-reg one and the process for the customer was, we had the car delivered directly from the dealer. Um, this one was Adrian Bryanison and um, it arrived here, we did the build and we simply get the, um, uh, the contract from Nissan. Uh, we fill out the form from um, Easy Reg, uh, take that into Motor Edge and get it registered. Like uh, DMW has already sent all their SSM material in, and um, it's it's actually really easy to do pre-reg. Um, I was pleasantly surprised by the process. I'm going to talk more about the engineering as we go around and look at the stickers and stuff. But let let us show us uh, 
or some of the build and why we did it this way. Let's start at the front and the beginning. Um, so this customer wanted it to look different and I think we've achieved this and I really like the color combo. So this is brilliant silver, color coded, and then we've gone had this um, powder coated in the center to give it that silver and black look. And I must admit, I love it. I think it looks fantastic. Um, they wanted to have a, an orange flare through this car inspired by dnw i don't know um but we went off and had um the hardcore lights that were supplied powder coated um actually sorry two-pack painted across the road in the dmw orange to match as well um carbon winch is hiding down there because it's a nice light winch and we put our own dash fair lead on here too look at that it looks so good it matches the bar so well Suspension, we've always been a big fan of the Tough Dog 40mm lift, and that's what this has got all the way around. Uh, it's, uh, we know, we can predict how the outcomes are gonna be with the Tough Dog coils, like, spot on, and we get it right every time. So, um, that's why we ended up choosing that. And I actually think these drive better lifted at 40mm um, anyway. They tend to have more down travel when full driving, they tow well. So anyway, that's why we've done that part of it, but you can do Dobinson's and other coils uh, if, if you need. Uh, upper control arms were fitted at the top to make sure the geometry is exact, and that's actually part of the DMW recipe, so that's why that's on there. Uh, camber correction bushes at the back, and we fit them into the upper arm at the rear, and I think that's the best way to manage the camber. Um, along with the DMW orange <laughs> trademark signature arms at the back. So when you're driving behind this car, there is no doubt you know this is a DMW GVM upgraded car. Rims and tyres. Um, I talk about research, study these cars all day, every day, and the whole engineering process, and I only just get it. Uh, it's such a difficult thing to work out. Um, Post reg, you have to abide by um, whatever offset rims were used when they did the, the testing. Um, and for DMW, it was a plus uh, 35. And we've gone for plus 40 on here because I think it looks good and we could get away without flares. Um, but tire size too. So depending on which state you live in, um, the laws for post reg GVM upgrades say that they have to be no bigger than either a 50 or 75 mil total lift. So in many states, we can only do basically a 285 tire. Um, Pre-reg, uh, when you go under an SSM, uh, it's a little bit more flexible and we could do a 295. And again, this is my favorite tire size um, for Y62s. It's uh, big enough, doesn't hurt the fuel economy too much, and the Yokohamas have never let us down. So again, we've done the XATs on this build. I should know, that the wheel loading to get the bigger 4499 GVM upgrade has to be uh, 1450 kilos per corner or greater. At the back of the car, I've got the Razzler color coded and color coded to the customer spec. So he wanted the brilliant silver on the bar and then black for the tire carrier and jerry can holder. We'll open this up. This is our first look actually at the new billet Razzler latches. I must say, they are an improvement. I love them. They're really good. I believe you can buy them separately now as well. That one's open. Next, let's have a look at the back of the car. So, this is when we're starting to get into the electrical side of things. <laughs> My job card's sitting there too. Um, there's quite a process when we uh, book a job in and there's many checks. So that's like parts of arrived, parts of installed. The red one's the first check, then the green one's the second check, and I'm still halfway through the second check. So there's a immense amount of checking we do before one of these cars go out. But what I brought you into the back is to have a look at the nice false floor. Under here, we're hiding a compressor. Um, we've got an uh, inverter on this side, RCDO over here, and that's so we can um, have our GPO. So we get a, um, a Sparky, who happens to be a Y62 owner, to come out and certify the um, 240 volt GPO, and that's all turned on and off um, by the remote. As we keep looking around here, oh, and the battery, of course, is under here. Um, so we've got one lithium DCS 100 under the, um, the floor, and then we've got another DCS 80 under the bonnet. They're linked together with a Victron combiner, giving us a 180 amp hours total, and we reserve about 
oh, 14 to start the car. So we've got 166, that's, if I've got good mass there, um, for all the appliances that we're gonna plug in off the inverter. Um, walking around now, uh, we've got our Safari light. We've always loved these things because they just look neat. They look like a, you know, a kitchen light, not a, um, a light that goes in a car. And that's what we want when we've got a nice car. Um, on the other side, um, this is the only way we do compressors now. Like, there's, I've seen outlets mounted all over other places. Like, it's, it's this or nothing, to be honest. I think that's the best way to mount an air outlet. Um, locker override control under here. Um, we haven't, we've got our eight gang switch. We haven't put the, the labels on them yet because we're not sure what order we're gonna do them on. Um, but we can turn the lights and the background lighting and all sorts of them on off there. And the Safari Pico as well. So it can, you probably can't see it because the um, GoPro doesn't pick up this very well, but I'll put some photos up. So we can have a look at the front and rear battery voltages independently. Um, barometric pressure. pressure. Um, we can see how much current's going in or out of the battery. Um, it's a, just a nice, neat way to manage what's happening with your electrical system, especially if you're thinking about coffee machines, cooktops, all that sort of stuff. So that, I believe, is coming to this car later. There's quite a lot of power needed for the caravan side of this vehicle. Um, so I've got three Andersons for the fridge, for the DC-DC charger, for the breakaway, and there's a camera system that we've put in too. Sometimes on like a genuine Nissan bar, we'll do a TLR bracket across here. But um, when we do a Razzler, I think it looks neater, just like that. Doing another exterior walk around, uh, Vogue Industries uh, mirror mount for the UHF. And as we come around, um, customer supplied, Fabwiz snorkel, looking awesome. And that's gonna suck the bird out of a tree one day. <laughs> that's massive. Um, dash three quarter roof rack and we do this specifically for the TILs you can put them on a TI too but the roof rack starts where the sunroof finishes and then goes right back so you basically to the tailgate getting the maximum amount of distance um, or, or cap load carrying capacity for the Y62 um, lights we've put up here as well these are road visions independently switched left and right by the Atkin 8 gang switch panel and also switched by that eight gang panel is this charge box under here. I'm sure you can see that. So in here we've got another Anderson, uh, dual USBs and a SIG socket under there. Oh, there's that RCDO by the way. So if it ever trips, you just flick it under there. Whilst in the cabin here, everything's nice, neat and clean. Nothing's absurd or hanging out. We've got the air compressor button here for the onboard air. Um, which sits down so we can adjust the airbags independently um, and it will show on the display. Um, Red Arc Toe Pro, that's like the best place to put them I reckon because where else are you going to put it? Like there's dead real estate so you might as well put it there. Um, and then we've got the UHF outlet so that can be packed away in the glove box when it's not needed. Safety Dave camera is coming out at the top here so that can be um, the monitor when this gentleman's uh, caravan arrives, you can put the monitor up here and um, that'll be all in the one place looking neat and tidy too. I want to talk about the engineering placards that go on here too. So we can see here, <laughs> I'm taking the VIN number away. Um, that's the DMW sticker that talks about the GVM upgrade and you can see it says um, uh, GVM 4499. Um, and then there's uh, a tyre placard which is yet to go on there, we'll do that in a minute. And then uh, another notation here which talks about um, the rest of the GVM engineering. I must admit, on the phones at both um, Dash Off Road, 4x4 DNA, Adelaide and Perth, so we can do this in Perth too by the way, um, most of the questions that come through are about GVM upgrades these days. I'd say like 19 out of 20, it's crazy. And uh, the question comes up about GCM and this is, um, th this is an interesting subject Feel free to comment below what you've investigated about this because there's laws changing in Queensland and, and uh, that will set status for the rest of the country, hopefully. But as far as a GCM upgrade, there's not really such a thing. And if someone's marketing that, I'm not sure if that is 100% accurate. However, through the DMW second stage manufacturing, they can state through their SSM a total vehicle load capacity of 7999 kilos. Now, so that's saying 
uh, moving away from what Nissan has done as a first stage manufacturer to DMW as a second stage manufacturer and this is what DMW say that the car can do now. I'm going to let the questions flood underneath that are going to come off the back of that statement and um, I think there'll be some good conversation about it. But that is the my interpretation of this, that this is now no longer a passenger vehicle um, uh, and it's now a goods carrying vehicle that happens to be able to take passengers. Um, but that's the category it sits in now and that's how it's engineered so we can achieve these numbers. One thing I want to be clear about though is the towing capacity. So that is unchanged. So if you've got a four ton caravan, this is the wrong car for you. Just because it says 7999 doesn't mean you can go and buy a caravan that's heavier than three and a half ton. That's all this car can ever tow is three and a half ton. So I just wanted to get that real clear from the start. As I'm talking about this, I'm not, I know I'm not going to answer every question in this video. So I reckon, I think I'm going to have to put up a follow up video to this um, and talk more about um, not just DMW, but all the GVM upgrades and what they actually mean. Because where I spend a lot of time on this subject and I think I've almost just got it, maybe. <laughs> it's pretty complex because there's so many different ways to, to judge a car. And, um, you know, top of mind questions that are going to come up. Um, if I'm sitting at seven and a half ton with my, my rig and the trans blows up, who do I go to? Well, I can tell you Nissan aren't going to help you because it's modified and it's got a second stage manufacturer. So you can't go to Nissan. Um, I'm sure there's some legal stuff there of what happens in an accident. Um, so I think I'm going to have to get an expert in, either our engineer or DMW, to talk about that level of things too. So that'll be a follow-up video. So that's the car and another one that rolls out the door. Yes, we can do this in Adelaide and Perth. Uh, it, it's a pleasure working on these cars and talking to the customers and just getting them just the way they want it and all the little nuances. Because even though this is similar to a lot of other builds we've done, there's some specific things that just the way this guy wanted it. And we, we love um, uh, being of service for this. All right, until the next video, um, we're out on this one. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah, yeah.